For hundreds of years, the traveler way of life was one of ancient traditions and simple tastes. Then their world collided with the 21st century. With unprecedented access to the UK's most secretive communities. They don't like anybody knowing anything about them at all. They even have their own language. This series will take you to the very heart of gypsy life. Yay! Through the biggest celebrations in the traveller calendar. From the most extravagant children's parties. Look at this. Would you ever get the toenails painted on that? To the biggest weddings on earth. It's the biggest day of a travelling girl's life. Very stressed. People not turning up on time, but that's Gypsy's ways. Nothing never gets done properly. And from birth all the way to the grave. Cheers, my Patrick. Cheers, my son. Over five episodes, this series will explore unique aspects of Gypsy and traveller life. <laughs> In a world where a man is a man. Oh, 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 oh. A woman knows her place. And courtship blossoms in an unusual way. Girls won't give you a kiss straight away, so you gotta kind of beat them for the kiss. But this is a community under threat. The Tinkers arrived, I don't really know what to call them, one evening, all very unexpected. Fighting for its very survival. She's not a dog! She's a human being! How long can the party last? <laughs> From the day a traveller girl is born, the preparations begin for the biggest day of her life. Her wedding day. Thelma Medine is the travelling community's dressmaker of choice. I can honestly say I don't think you've ever lived unless you've been to a traveller's wedding. From the minute these young girls can walk and talk, the only thing they're thinking about is their wedding day and getting married and getting the dress of their dreams. She'll say to you, I want mine to be the biggest. What's the biggest dress you've ever done? Well, I want mine bigger than that one. Thelma has been making increasingly spectacular outfits for Gypsy and Traveller Girls for over 15 years. Lights off. But their exotic dress sense took some getting used to. When I first seen them, it was like, my God, they did look like prostitutes. That's how you would describe them. They were dressed with short skirts, low tops, and, you know, just you just wouldn't walk around like that, or you wouldn't let your daughter walk around like that. But when you get to know them, the, the morals are so high, you would say they were definitely stuck in a time warp. They're not allowed to go out on their own, and there's definitely, definitely, definitely no sex before marriage. <laughs> Marriage for these girls tends to happen at a young age. Sixteen-year-old Irish traveller Josie met her fiancé, 19-year-old Swanley, just four months ago. The wedding is in five weeks' time. Sorry, baby. I like that. No, baby, it's sweaty. We started chatting on Facebook. First saw his photo on Facebook, I thought. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> I was like, better built back then. <laughs> oh, sure. That doll there, what's the name of this doll? Is it Royal Dalton or Cold Dalton? I've got Royal Dalton there, and I've got Cold. Go on, I love it, go on. Most traveller girls must be chaperoned when going out with a boy. 
even once they're engaged. I love you. Swanley's mum has accompanied the couple to one of the biggest events in the gypsy calendar, the Epsom Fair, where they're buying homeware for their future caravan. You, you will actually say? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Even when they're little girls, if they go around the fair and they say, oh, I like that tea set. When I get married, I want a tea set like that. They start when they're young, very young. You know, I was looking after kids, looking after the young, when I was 10 years old. I was 10 years old on my side. So we are brought up that way. That's the way we are brought up. Homemakers, they call us. We're bred into it. <laughs> We're brought up to be homemakers. Josie's dreams of married life may be about to come true. But for the single traveller girl, the place to meet boys is in this West London car park. 15-year-old gypsy cousins Cheyenne and Montana can be found here most weekends, dressed to impress. So how old are you both now? I'm 15. I'm 15, okay. And uh, when would you like to get married? 16. I'll be about 17, 18. About 18. About 16, 17, when I'm ready. But I couldn't see any older than that. Traveller girls have to follow the strict rules of courtship imposed on them by the community. It's more what you can't do than what you can do. Like, say like it's a bunch of boys and one girl's there, then your name's talked about. It's just how it should be, like girls with girls and boys with boys. Girls aren't allowed to approach boys. They must wait to be chosen, sometimes through a ritual known as grabbing. Only an old kiss, you know? A kiss? No, yeah. I don't believe in grabs. No? No. Why'd you come here then, boys? What? Why'd you come here? To get some good looking ladies. <laughs> like these, you know? There's your answer right there. <laughs> you see all the pretty girls, get their numbers, smooke them up, girls? hug them, <laughs> smell the perfume. What do the boys actually do to get women? Just give them the eye, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying, though, girls, innit? Now, I reckon boys grabs girls, I don't reckon they should grab girls. I think she just pull them away to the corner, give them the gift of the gammon, and Bob's drunk because you're getting a kiss, <laughs> isn't you? Come on. So are you able to explain what grabbing is? Well, like, they take a girl off and they say, will you give us a kiss? And you say, the girl says no or yes, but, like, I would say no. They say no and then they do something, like, where it hurts, you know? They push, like, I don't know, twist, like, arm twist arm. arms to hurt you, and then, like, they keep doing it until you give them a kiss, but they, like, fail, they'll fail, they don't. But that means they like a girl. That means, like, they like a girl and they want to get to know them and get their number. The next opportunity for Cheyenne and Montana to attract the attention of traveller boys will be at the wedding of their friend, Josie. She and her 14-year-old sister, Barbara, are putting the finishing touches to the big day. That's nice, but I want a shape like that. That's nice with the diamonds going to it. Two of them, yeah? The whole wedding's going to be pink. I see you're going to walk in and see pink everywhere. I've got blue ones it's all done on the, all the roofs. You can't see none of the roofs. It's just got all pink blue ones, pink and oh, white blue ones. What colour is your dress? It's white. White, mm -hmm. OK. And what colour are the bridesmaids? Pink. 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 Yeah. Do you know the marker, pink? Uh, I like bright pink. pink. Oh, OK, like, yeah. Yeah, like that pink. Oh, right, lovely. That's the colour of the bridesmaids. Oh, right, OK. It's about that colour anyway. It's probably a bit brighter, but... Brighter? <laughs> OK. No problem. There's not a, a rose that's as bright as that. How long have you been planning this now? The wedding? Yeah. It's been four months. No, it's not. It's been... Three months. Three months now. Three months prior on that. And how long have you been with Four months. That's wrong. <laughs> and we're, we're longer engaged than what we were going out with each other. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later. See you later. See, right, see you later. Bye. 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 Josie and her family, like many gypsy and travellers in Britain today, choose to live in a house rather than a caravan. Though Josie will be leaving the family home soon, she is preoccupied with more significant matters. How important is the wedding dress? The wedding dress is the main thing out of all. Every girl wants their dress to be the best, because you're only going to wear it that one day, and it's that one same thing is basically why is the wedding so big, because 
it's the one time we're getting married. It's not like I've been married seven or eight times after. So you want to say, oh, look, my dress is like this, and my dress is like that. Because you wait, like, since you're a baby, just to wear it, like, to feel like a princess. It's the corset, is a long corset, it's about hair. It's see-through. Then the bones, just, you can just see the bones. And then there's, like, a rose. And then it comes out, that hair comes out that much, and it comes about that much down that way. Um, it's got to split up the leg. It's weird, but it's nice. And then it's got a rose just there, a couple of roses. It sounds plain, but it's nice. Will it be heavy? It wasn't too heavy when I tried it on, but that was only, that wasn't, it wasn't fully made then. So, but usually girls get scars on their hips over. Yeah, I know, they said the more bleeds, the better the dress. <laughs> There are a number of milestones in a young traveller girl's life en route to her wedding day. Her first Holy Communion is the most extravagant of them all. Isn't that, that's every little girl's dream, isn't it? it is. I'd say with the travellers, it's, it's fair to say this is like a dress rehearsal for their wedding. They actually, they love the idea of the, the dressing up the princess dress and, and this is just like a, a little taster of what they're going to have. Dressmaker Thelma has just finished a communion gown inspired by the Eddie Murphy film, Coming to America. It's really common with the traveller girls to bring photographs or actually pass us films of Disney characters um, or any sort of film where there's an elaborate wedding dress or an elaborate dress in it. Good nice. Fabulous, okay. yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Isn't it? After waiting for months, the Irish traveller family are about to see the communion dress for the first time. Close your eyes, come on. I'll hold your hands so you don't fall. Ready? Go. Go on, you can see now. What do you think? Do you love it? Do you love it, yeah? Isn't it gorgeous? Are you going to cry, babe? Oh. Yeah. Mum Marie, seven-year-old Margarita and her brother John Boy have made a 300-mile round trip from their site in Gloucester. Is that what you thought it'd be? I thought it's nicer than I thought. It's nicer than you thought. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Hey? I think when your daddy sees this, he'd start crying. What do you think? Hey, his little princess. You want to try it on? I want to see the dress. I want to see. I want to see the dress on my sister. They're not letting you in yet. No, they. That's because she's getting changed. Hurry up! I I want to go and see the dress. Um, dun, dun. <laughs> dun. Amazing. You're gonna cry. Everyone's gonna cry. <laughs> she's thrilled, isn't she? Is it what you were there thinking? Yeah. What you do, you see that little bit there, it's going to be straight and tight. You know, just get some, you know, plasters, you know, like what you put on, you like blister plasters, and just stick them along there. So it won't come. Yeah, so, so it doesn't rub more than anything, because she's not used to having anything tight, is she? John Boy will be taking his communion on the same day, in an outfit inspired by the same film. He's going as the African prince. It's a nice dress. It's a lovely dress. Oh, it's not nicer on my suit. Princess. John, why you never call me a princess? Why you call me one now? Oh. You like a princess. But you always call me a rat. You're not a princess. This ain't like a princess, I think this whole outfit, what she's going to wear, is going to be really, really uncomfortable. But I've never once heard a travelling child complain of pain, discomfort or anything. As long as it looks good, they're happy. Travelling communities have been living in Britain for over 500 years. The two largest groups are Romani Gypsies and Irish Travellers. To preserve their culture, they rarely mix with outsiders and are raised in enormous families. Bride-to-be Josie is the eldest of nine. This is me. Good-looking sisters getting married. You know, I can't wait. 
wait till the wedding. So, so beautiful, isn't she? Shall I get her off my right now? Mr. Simon, you're going to sign me. Say hello. And this here's baby doll. Say hello, baby doll. Just say it. It's not baby. Say hello. This is my Christopher. Six. Six, six that's Good right. Four, this is Pa. Put your top down there. That's very. <laughs> We're basically it's our humble home and it's our loving family. Hello. Like many traveller girls, hello, hello. Josie left school aged 11 to care for her siblings and help with the housework. The woman shouldn't work. I think it's, just, it's the man's job to do. You know, like, just go out work and bring money in and all that there. I don't think it's the woman's job. It's the man's world. The man's a man, the woman's a woman. If the woman ever went out to earn the money and the man ever had to stay home to look after the children, it'd be a funny dude, I'm telling you. There'd definitely be something wrong there. I I can't see that ever happening between our community. I can never ever see that going on. There definitely have to be something wrong. That couldn't happen. Josie's husband-to-be Swanley is an English gypsy. He works for himself as a manual labourer, looking after horses in his spare time. No, no, Josie is the right girl. She's a good cook, you know. I know. She does clean up through most of the day. That's a good sign. And that's that ain't really the main thing. So the main thing is, you know, I'll get on with her well. That's the main thing. Cheyenne and Montana are hunting for a dress to wear at their friend Josie's wedding in two weeks' time. Do you like that? No. No? It's forbidden for gypsy and traveller girls to go on dates with boys. So weddings are one of the few places they can openly meet. And is a wedding somewhere that sort of younger guys and girls can meet each other? Yeah, like travellers usually have always have an open wedding, then an invite only. So like travellers that don't even know each other just go there and meet up and they meet new people. And they go there for a good time. Cheyenne and Montana attend up to 15 weddings a year. Every time there's a new wedding, like a wedding or something, a dance, we would always buy a new dress. If I liked a dress, I couldn't care about the price. <laughs> I'm sure my mum and dad would, but me, that's all right. How much would you roughly pay for a dress? I don't know, about up to, I'd pay 300. And how often do you wear this dress? Once, I'll say it once. <laughs> Did you get this short and hair? Oh, Joe, you, you short. <laughs> no, because I don't like things to my knees, because I've got short legs, it is. <laughs> we don't need to make them that, short. That's short enough. It's all about, like, looking the best and impressing, I don't know, just to look, feel good in herself. When it comes to when you have to make the most of it. I don't like the picture on it. See, I couldn't have, if I was to have a dress, I would not if have... If that was a picture of herself on there, she'd yeah, that, if, it, if it was a picture of myself, but someone else on it, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that, anyway? Girls growing up in traveller families must never be seen in public alone. They usually go out in large packs. You've got to keep your name clear. Basically, you have to have... you got to, like... like clean. you got to be clean and decent in everybody's eyes. You can't let everyone go around saying that you did this or you did that. If I went out, or like any traveling girl went out to meet a boy on their own, it was just them and the boy, anything could happen, like, anything not generally could happen. It was just, like, he could say, that happened, this happened, and obviously she knows it didn't happen. And what would that mean to the, to the traveller girl? That means, basically, she's scandalised. Dirty. Basically, where well, you never Gammy. get married, your name's filth. The same rules do not apply to boys. A boy can leave you the know? house. He can get up and go on, and go on about his business. You don't have to come back. You don't have to say he's gone. Just say, all right, see you later on my back later on. Doesn't See you have daddy. to come back. A girl has back got back to ask her daddy, ask her mummy and daddy's permission to go. Ring them if it's like all right with them. Out. When they're out, you've got to ring them every couple of, every half hour, every couple of minutes of the day. They've got to be in for a certain time. You know? There's loads of things. <laughs> Do 
do you think that's fair? Yeah, yeah I do think it's fair. I think so it's it basically is the boys' world to do. Obviously, they put the money and put the food on the table, so it's their world. Would you world. change it? No, nope. not for nothing. <laughs> A week before the wedding, bride-to-be Josie and her family of ten have travelled to Lanzarote <laughs> to celebrate her last week as a single woman. <laughs> Kept within the bosom of her family until she's handed over to her husband, Tonight they will give Josie a hen party to remember. Oh. Ah, you just poked me in the eye. Sorry. Is it beginning to sink in now, Josie? Yeah, it really is beginning to sink in a, re a lot, a lot. Don't ask me. I don't know why. It's like this week I realised, God, I really am getting married next week. I don't know. I think I'm, a, I, I'm getting a bit more scared yeah, like, and nervous. Yeah. I do want to get married, but I'm just getting nervous. How would you describe your outfits for this evening? I'd describe them... Spanish. Traveller and gypsy girls aren't allowed to drink alcohol before marriage. But that doesn't stop them having a good time. Obviously, I don't want her to go. I feel pretty bad about it. I don't want to give her to anybody, but I know she's got to go whenever it is. I'm not going to grow up straight away. I can still grow up. I grew up with Sunley. Me and Sunley grew up together. <laughs> How do you think you'll feel next week when she's walking down the aisle? Well, I'm sure I'm going to cry, but I mean, I done it, so she's got to do it. I done it at 17, so I'm sure she's going to be capable of doing it, and she's going to be all right. You think she's ready? I'm sure she's ready. I was ready at 17, so I'm sure she will be. Back home in England, groom-to-be Swanley is on his caravan site in Surrey, where he's lived with his extended family his whole life. Once they're married, Josie will move on to the site. While she's been away, what have you had to do? Follow trailer, sort of plot out. All sorts. I ain't stopped. It's the man's job to buy their marital trailer, but with just six days to go until the big day, Swanley's unsure of his choice. I don't think she'll like it. I don't think she'll like it. Uh, tell you what, I ain't completely happy with it. Myself, but I can't. F no one's selling any. Better ones, you know. I'm not sure about the colour of the seats though, I might get them re-levered. Different colour. What colour are the seats at the moment? I ain't gonna say that. Well, can you show me inside? No. Why not? Because I'm not. You can see inside with the camera off. <laughs> if you turn the camera off, you can see inside. Why do you need to do some stuff to it? Yeah. I need to do some a lot of work to it. I'll turn the camera off then you can see inside. Travellers are extremely house proud, and the inside of this caravan has yet to be cleaned. With Josie away, there's no one around to do the job. In Stroud, it's a special day for seven year old Margarita. 500 metres of pink netting are about to transform her into a princess for the day. That's the umbrella, that's the corset, that's the crown, that's the, the slip, that's the dress. Not to be outdone, brother John Boy has a suit fit for a prince. That's the trouser, and um, the coat has 
Look. Have this. Um, when you button the code up, you button that in there. Yeah, it's gonna be really special. It's the morning of their first Holy Communion. Decorated with over 5,000 crystals, Margarita's dress weighs twice her own body weight. As is tradition in the traveling community, the children make their own way to church, complete with a bottle of fake champagne. Margarita's extravagant dress will make sure she stands out from the crowd. The little girl and Marie were explaining to me that this is a, it's like a school communion, so it's all the children that will be in her class will be making the communion together. But uh, Marie's little girl is the only traveller who will be making her communion at that time. Um, so I think you'll see a stark difference between the clothes what the other kids wear and what this little girl wears. <laughs> I must say it was quite a surprise. <laughs> but we've had uh, travellers waiting here about a year ago or so, and the bride had a great big dress then. So I'm getting used to it, and it doesn't face me at all. For Josie, her big day has finally arrived. An army of helpers are getting her ready for her wedding. I can't eat food, I'm too nervous. Why? I can't eat, but mummy is blocked. All me eating. Blocked. So he's going to eat, he won't go in. I don't know what to do, cry or laugh. I don't, I feel like I've got all these butterflies in my stomach and I'm just flying around. <laughs> Is this like really happening kind of thing? Well, the days the big days, boys. That's the way I saw my life away forever. Well, now I've got to get my hair done. 
sort myself out, get dressed, drive to the church, all done. Ready, Josie? Yeah, I'm ready. I hope I am. Like when the stuff that's Save her! Wedding guests Cheyenne and Montana are preparing for tonight's party. At Josie's wedding tonight, I'd like to get a very good laugh out of it, enjoy myself, because this wedding's only ever going to happen once, and I bet it's going to be a lovely wedding, meet new people, and have a good time. Where's the makeup burger? At the tender age of 15, they already know what they're looking for in a husband. Well, I'd like a man that don't lay in the bed all day, goes to work, gives you money, uh, that's nice to you, don't go off to the pub every night. Shows they care. Yeah, shows they care. Don't go off to nightclubs, don't go off with other women. Just like um, your man. I'm very loyal to you. To you. I don't beat you. No, I'd like a, a very loyal husband that st stood by you. Yeah, wait. Swan Lee will be making his own way to the church, with the service due to begin in just over an hour. Well, Joseph gets the limo, and I'm going to trance it. Gypsy boy style. <laughs> you still All With the most important element of her wedding hitched, pushed, pulled, and tied into place, this is the moment Josie's been waiting for. Weighing over five stone, her dress has a thigh-length slit at the front to give it that certain Spanish something. Yeah. I look nice, I look the class. The church is a short drive from Swanley's hotel, if you know where you're going. Excuse my dear, which way is it to Ivor? Excuse my friend, how do you get to Ivor? Up to the main Denham roundabout. Yeah. Then do like a left. What will happen if Josie turns up there and you're not there? Oh, she'd kill me. Uh, if I was there, if she, if she turned up there and I wasn't there, Oh, she would murder Kate me. 30 minutes before the service is due to start, Josie and her entourage are in the car park waiting for the limos to arrive. The dress is lovely, I've got it on me now. I've just got to brush my teeth, I know it's horrible with the corporate toothpaste and the toothbrush, but let me put you on to Barbara for one minute, yeah? Where are we? We are. God knows. My friend, where's the, the Ivor Church, St. Peter's Church? <sighs> what time is it now, Sonny? Ten to one. Well, the time now is ten to one. You know what time I'm getting married at? One o'clock. You know how long it's going to take to get to the church? Half an hour. But Josie is even further away and has a bigger problem. Her limousine is running half an hour late. The back of people never showed up. Please, God. Let's please let the limousine from the car pick me up. Please, God. Go on, just have a limousine. Excuse my friend. I have a church. I'm here somewhere. Going down here somewhere, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you're for the wedding? Yeah. With time ticking, first left. Swanley has finally been given clear directions. No, this is a, this is a packy wedding. <laughs> no. 
What's a non-racist word for corner? Indian? Right. <laughs> I've got to do it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, <laughs> it's an Indian wedding. <laughs> it's my fucking wedding. Oh, dear me. Oh, she's going to kill me down dead. Back. We shall get through this together. <laughs> God love it. Having been lost for over an hour, Swanley has found the right church. There we are. I'm at the church. I'm ready to get married. Let's go. But there's one person missing, the bride. Where you at? Oh, Josie, Josie, what have you done to me? Oh, no, Justin, I'm stressing out, girl. Come on, girl, where are you at? Fuck are you? Where, are you having fry sip yet? You're still inviting South Fry Sip, your, your, your town? Jesus Christ, Josie. Are you worried? Yeah. Mm, I'm a little bit worried. Because uh, the, kiddie, the, kiddie, the man there, the <laughs> vicar, is on about, if it's any longer, I might not be able to do it. It's all right. And it's all right now, yeah? yeah just relax. Just deep breathe. Just relax. All right? Seventeen-year-old bride-to-be Josie should have been standing at the altar 30 minutes ago. But she's still waiting for her car to arrive to take her to the church. Is there any limousine? Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, bye-bye, bye-bye. My car is here. He's got to be through. He thinks it's a limousine. He's gonna... As the guests await the bride, Swanley has gone down the pub. Oh, the time is half past one. It's half past one. And I've meant to be married, what, oh. half an hour ago? Oh, well, right. <laughs> At long last, the limousines have arrived. Yeah, I am excited. I'm really excited. I've got to sit like this all the way there. Take your time, take your time, very, very slowly. Let all the guests are still outside, look. In the presence of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come together to witness the marriage of Swanley and Josie, to pray for God's blessing on them, to share their joy, and to celebrate their love. Swanley, I give you this ring. Swanley, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. <laughs> As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. All this I am, I give to you. <laughs> and all that I have, I share with you. <laughs> all that I have, I share with you. <laughs> it's the nerves, don't mind. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Please stand to greet Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Hey, you're 
as the newlyweds make their way to the reception. Montana and Cheyenne, like most of the guests, are about to join them. The girls will have to be on guard for boys looking to stake their claim on a potential wife. Well, if you think someone's going to grab you, just stay out the way and you stay with the girls and try and avoid it, really. That's a definite 100% what's going to be happening tonight at this wedding. There definitely will be grabs there. Swanley's first duty as a husband is to show his new wife to her seat at the top table. Who's there, baby? I've got to get here now. I'm just here because I do. Oh, script! Put that all around there. That's it, put that up there. Oh, is it? Oh, wait. Are you on it? <laughs> What's up? Come me up because it's with me. It's through my skin. Wait, right. let's not do that. That's very dangerous. No, come here, come here. No, no, come here. Come here. This is caught me, Swanley. What's caught you? What is caught you? I just stand up, yeah? Yeah, that's it. Come round. You come round. That's it, that's it, that's slowly. Alright. Then I pick you down. Yeah. Then you can't move. It's alright. Oh. Alright. Are you comfortable? Put, this way more, this yeah. way more. Well put what more? This way more. This cut this way. Just push it up this. Alright? Yeah, that's it. Swanley has slipped into something more comfortable, just in time to cut the cake with his wife. Cheyenne and Montana arrive as the younger generation make their way to the dance floor. No, there's a fair few boys and girls here. Montana's been dancing and been chatting to people and having a look about and getting mixed in with the party. With the evening drawing to a close, a young man makes his intentions clear to 15-year-old Cheyenne through the Irish traveller custom of grabbing. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Right, please get off me now. Oh, don't pretend, don't pretend. No, I really need to go. She just kissed me. <gasps> Why are you lying? She's pretending she's getting oh, grabbed. Montana, no. <laughs> she's pretending she's getting grabbed. She wants me to get violent. No, we don't. Montana. Right, I think it's time for you to let it's go. It's time for her to give me a kiss, so... <laughs> oh, man. Where are you going? Oh, right, this is... Um... Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Right, give me a kiss. Right, Montana. Okay. That's That's not I don't worry about it. Montana, four. I'll see you in about ten minutes, okay? <laughs> She's getting grabbed, but she ain't got to kiss him anyway, so... so are you worried about her? Not really, she can fight for herself. Well, I'm standing out here and he, like, got a hold of me and then he pushed me up the road. He like was trying to get a kiss off me, and it's called grabbing, really. So was it a, was it a violent grab? No, it wasn't a violent grab. No, I've had much worse. That there wasn't from that. It's like very. I don't know. It's not nice at all. But you just have to live with it. You have to keep trying to get him off you, and that's about it. It's all you can do. As Cheyenne takes the first steps in travel a courtship, for Josie, the biggest day of her life is nearly over. It's time to say goodbye as she's handed over to her husband to spend the first ever night away from her family. We've all been through it. 
What are your hopes now for marriage? Being together. Forever. Oh, God, forever. Actually growing up together. I'm not knocking the forever part. <laughs> <laughs> I was that happy and over the moon, it's unbelievable. I remember such a beautiful girl. Completely handsome.